Hey guys, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and today we're gonna to talk about the importance of supplementing CO2 to get really good plant production in indoor growing environments. So whether you're a greenhouse grower or an indoor grower, uh, most likely uh, you need to be supplementing CO2 in order to get good plant production. So we know that plants are mostly made of water, right? Usually 85 to 95% water, depending on the crop. The rest of that plant is kind of a mixture of carbon and hydrogen and minerals. And um, we can do these analyses where we burn the plant and the ash that's left over kind of tells us what the plant composition is there. But the big thing is that carbon is one of the most important things uh, when it comes to plant structure and growth. Now, where does that carbon come from? We know that plants are fixing carbon in the form of CO2, okay? So CO2 exists just in the air that we're breathing, usually around 390 parts per million, somewhere in that range. But in a growing environment where the plants are fixing that CO2, they're taking it out of the atmosphere, right? It's, it's diffusing into the plant tissues and the plants are basically, uh, through the photosynthetic processes, fixing that carbon and creating sugar, which is what they're using to grow, right? Um, so in that process, especially in indoor environments, we end up with really, really low levels of carbon dioxide if we're not replenishing it. This becomes a big problem for growers because once your CO2 gets down below 300, 250, anywhere in that range, your plants effectively stop growing. It doesn't matter how much light you're dumping on them. It doesn't matter how balanced your nutrition is. None of that matters. All that matters at that point is CO2 and it is your most limiting variable at that point. So if you're an indoor grower, greenhouse or inside, and you're not paying attention to CO2, it's possible that you're missing out on some very uh, cheap production that you can get just by supplementing additional CO2. So CO2 just exists in the, in the atmosphere and as plants take it out, it drops, the level of CO2 drops. So unless we're dumping more CO2 into that uh, growing environment, we end up with really low levels of CO2. And below a certain, certain thresholds, the plants just can't grow. They can't fix the carbon, which means that they can't grow. It means all the light that we're dumping on them is essentially wasted. It means all of the energy inputs, heating, all of the stuff that we're doing for that growing environment is wasted because there's simply not enough CO2. Now this is really sad because I know there are a lot of producers out there that suffer from very low CO2 levels in their greenhouse. And CO2 is really, really inexpensive to supplement. If you have questions on how much it actually costs, go to able.ag, go to the calculators, go to the indoor uh, growing section and the CO2 calculator, and it will tell you what the cost is on a daily basis. For most growers, it's just a couple of bucks, even for a pretty big facility. So we're talking about a few dollars to get significant improvements in plant growth. Over ambient, you can usually get a 30% increase in your plant production, depending on the crop type. For most greenhouse crops, for most indoor crops, you can get very, very good production with CO2 supplementation and really, really stunted production if you're not supplementing CO2. So there are a few different ways to measure CO2. Most control systems have a CO2 sensor, and there are also some handheld CO2 sensors out there that you can use to measure CO2 in your growing environment. So what you're looking for there is uh, elevated levels. So most growing environments, you should be running CO2 between 800 and 1200 parts per million. Some growers will, will grow closer to 1500 parts per million. Honestly, there's, there's kind of a law of diminishing returns there. For most folks, 1,200 is as high as you'll ever have to go. When you supplement to 1,200 parts per million, you're really, really boosting your plant's ability to, uh, to grow effortlessly, to grow very quickly. Um, the CO2 exchange process, the oxygen exchange process is much, much faster, much, much easier on the plant. And as a side note, plants become more water efficient. So if you struggle with controlling humidity in your environment, if you struggle with controlling kind of transpiration rates with your crops, introducing more CO2 can really, really help reduce transpiration and water use in your system. All right, for you as the grower, the first thing you have to do is understand whether or not you have a CO2 problem. You can do that by measuring it either with a handheld meter or just by using your main control system to tell you what your CO2 levels are in your growing environment. Once you know what those things are, make sure you fix the problem. And in the next video, we talk about different ways to supplement CO2, different ways that you can correct this issue in your growing environment, and understand what it's gonna cost you. That is, what does this look like in the long term? What types of fuels will you use? Uh, what type of uh, techniques will you use? 
and uh, check out our other video on that uh, in order to get a handle on it. Able.egg is also a really useful tool for figuring out what the actual daily, weekly, monthly, annual costs are of supplementing CO2 in your environment. It also tells you how much you're going to need to get good production out of your crop. Thanks so much for watching. Check out the other videos in this series. They're gonna be really, really helpful for you to, to help with wrapping your mind around kind of this issue for indoor growers. Again, if you're growing indoors, this is the single most important thing you can probably do to boost your yields. Uh, please subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure you ask those below. Also, check out the link below for able.ag. It's the CO2 calculator. It will be really, really helpful in uh, determining what your CO2 consumption looks like and the best, best method for supplementing your CO2. You bet. So there are a few... So there are a few different...